But the first question that we uh, that we have tonight, let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, what is the difference between a pastor and a preacher? This is a question that a lot of people have uh, have asked in the past. I have gotten, asked, you know, I've been called a pastor uh, from different folks, and uh, I, you know, so I can usually when someone t- calls me a pastor, I can either, you know, I can. I usually know that they either come from a denominational background or they might be attending somewhere, and that's just typically what they call the preacher uh, is a pastor. And I know that you know sometimes they don't mean anything by it. Uh, they you know a lot of people use it as a title, uh, but what we know we don't deserve titles in the church, especially. And so uh, that's why I wanted to make sure that we address this. And I actually wrote an article about this a couple of years ago that was put in the bulletin, but I want to hit some of these points again. Uh, since it was asked again, and so it might be fresh on people's minds. Uh, first off, when you look at a preacher, a preacher is not the same def- even definition as a pastor. There are preachers that we see in the Bible. There are pastors, and we'll get to the pastor part of this, but a preacher in and of itself is a herald. That's the definition, the Greek definition of what that word is. Uh, a herald, you probably, you know, more modern day, we probably don't hear of heralds a whole lot. Um, for those who are a little bit older, if you remember, you know, the you, you would see sometimes the child that's out on the street corner with the newspaper and he'd be saying something like, you know, uh, you, you know, read all about it, extra, extra, read all about it. And he would just try to, you know, get people interested in what was printed in the newspaper. That was a, you know, that's a herald is a, you know, it's a pro, they are a proclaimer. And that's what a preacher is, is a proclaimer. He proclaims the gospel. When you look at what the preachers did in the New Testament, that's what they would do is they were proclaimers of what Christ has given to us, the word of God. They would go, you know, whether they, it was in the synagogue or whether it was around different people, we know that Paul did it on Mars Hill. He proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Uh, if you look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, I want to give a couple of scripture references for this so that we can understand a little bit better what the preacher, what the role of the preacher is, rather. A preacher does not have the authority that a pastor has. A preacher is a, uh, typically, when you look at now, especially as, uh, you know, they're hired and they proclaim the gospel every, you know, week in and week out. And they can do it in the local congregation, they can do it uh, overseas, they can do it in other parts of the world or the country, or even locally in other, you know, in different areas, but that's essentially what they are. Romans 10, 14, Paul writes, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how they sh- shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's, you know, you see the progression of what Paul is doing right here. And we, you know, we can start from the back, from the end of this and then just kind of work forward. First, you'd have, you know, there's a preacher, a proclaimer of the gospel. Well, that proclaimer of the gospel is, you know, is going to tell so many different people and those who believe that gospel or th- those that want to accept Christ are going to hear that gospel. In other words, they're going to accept that gospel. And then once they hear that gospel and accept it, they're going to believe in him. And then once they believe in him and accept that gospel and you know, obey that gospel, it's not just saying, hey, that sounds good, or he's, you know, he's a great speaker. A lot of people are great speakers, but they don't preach the truth. And so this is, a, you know, this all has to do with what the truth is. And then once they have believed, then they are able to call on him. We did, you know, we talked a little, a few weeks ago about what it means to call on the Lord. That is to praise him, to, to glorify him. But he's only going to accept that from those who are obedient to him. And so you see that preacher and the importance of what that preacher or that proclaimer of the gospel is. That they, you know, you, you look at Peter on Pentecost. That's what was happening when he preached the gospel of Christ on Pentecost. 3,000 people heard what he was saying and the other apostles. And it says, you know, and then when you read after Acts 2.38, Around verse two, uh, 41, 41, 42, it says that they gladly received his word. Well, what happened? Well, they were baptized. Exactly what he said in Acts 2.38. So he preached that repentance. He preached baptism. Those who gladly received that word did exactly what he proclaimed the gospel to do for them. And so Paul 
And then Paul talks, uh, tells the Romans the same thing in this letter to them. Look over at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 7. Paul tells Timothy right here, and of course, you know, Timothy was the uh, prodigy of Paul. Paul was his mentor. And Timothy's responsibility was to go to these different towns that Paul would assign him, and he would preach the gospel. But Paul tells Timothy in this first letter, for which I was appointed, look at this right here, a preacher and an apostle. Paul couldn't be an elder. We don't have any record that he was an elder. We have no record that he was married with faithful children, as the qualifications state. But he could preach, and that's exactly what he did, didn't he? Paul would, in fact, when he set up these different congregations, a lot of the time he would stay in one area, and he would preach for so long, he would proclaim the gospel. He would also go into the synagogues. He would try to reach the Jews, and when he couldn't reach the Jews, he started preaching to the Gentiles. And so he preached the gospel of them. And so he says, "I, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, and then look at this, he expands on this. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. And so he, when he turned to the Gentiles, he didn't preach a different gospel, didn't preach a different doctrine to the Gentiles. It was the same one to the Gentiles that it was for the Jews. And thankfully we have that one. It's not going to confuse anyone. The Gentiles by that time were able to be saved just like the Jews could be saved with the very same doctrine of Christ and for the same reason with the with the death and the cross of Christ itself and so Paul ta- calls himself a preacher and an apostle he deciphers the two of, or he differentiates the two of them then we get to second peter chapter 2 and verse 5 And Peter is given a, an example right here. He's reiterating or recounting a, uh, something that happened long ago to these persecuted Christians. He says, God did not spare the ancient world, but he saved Noah, one of eight people, and look at how he describes Noah right here, a preacher of righteousness. That's what Noah did. In fact, he preached for 120 years trying to get people to, to, to start following God. But there was a time where that ran out. There was a time, an end time, to when God said, okay, enough is enough. No one's listening to Noah. Can you imagine that? Noah just keeps preaching and preaching and try to get people on board. And no one responded except for his family. And as they found out that they should have done it. But it said Noah was a preacher, a proclaimer of righteousness. That's what he was called to do by God, is to proclaim. He didn't have any higher status than that. Of course, he was a, you know, we know that Noah was uh, very significant in the history of the Hebrews and, those, and the people and as a patriarch, but he was called on to try to preach, to get people onto the ark. So that's what a preacher is, is a proclaimer of the gospel. He's, you know, there's no title for him. There's no special, you know, you know, there's no special robes or clothing. You know, a long time ago in the first century, that's one of the things that they're trying to really set apart different preachers and different leaders of the church is that's when they started bringing in these, you know, all the robes and they try to separate them by, you know, making them more than what they were by what they wore. Uh, that, you know, they started getting the hats for them and then just, you know, one thing led to another and there's, all these different, you know, it's almost like a uniform they have to wear just to show people, you know, look at me and look how high up I am. And that's never, never what the church was intended to be. A preacher was simply a proclaimer of what the gospel and you know what? Anyone in here can proclaim that gospel to those who are outside of Christ. What an amazing thing that is. We have the capability of converting the lost by preaching to them. But a preacher is simply one who proclaims the gospel. And that's a little bit different then than what a pastor is. Because a pastor, there you go, is part of uh, the leadership in the body of Christ, part of the leadership in the, in the church. In fact, there's three different terms which properly describe the same office of that leadership in the church. One is a pastor, as you see up here. One is an elder, one is an overseer or a bishop, and I want to go over each one of these as well. It's different than what a preacher is. 
A pastor is the Greek word, comes from the Greek term poimen. And it's defined or simply translated a shepherd. That's what he does. That's what he is. You think of what a shepherd does. You know, a shepherd tends a flock or he, you know, a herd. He's a guardian of what, of that flock. You think of what an, you know, what an elder does. He, you know, they protect the flock in the spiritual sense of the word. We are, you know, we, we have been described as the church as sheep, aren't we? There's nothing wrong with sheep. You know, that, that gets, gets such a negative connotation in, you know, these days with so many different people, but I think there's even a song that goes, I'm not going to sing it to you, but it's a children's song about being sheep and goats and, but we are sheep. Christ is, you know, Christ is commonly referred to as our, you know, as the shepherd. But the elders or the pastors, the poimen, are the shepherds of the flock. They take care of them. What happens when someone stops coming? They're called, aren't they? When someone's struggling, they're called. They, you know, the, the, the shepherds tend to them. And you probably heard of the elders as regarded as shepherds as well. But you consider that a shepherd watches over the herd and they protect it. That's their job. That's what they are to do for the local congregation. They're not over someone else's flock. That's why every congregation is, a, is to be autonomous. We don't have where one shepherd is over multiple flocks, do we? We don't see that. In fact, it was Paul who tells Timothy and Titus, I want you to go into each town and you would, you know, and you assign elders or bishops, which we're going to get to in just a moment, for each congregation, for each church in the congregational sense. And so they're over their immediate, their own immediate flock and no one else's. When you look, look over at Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, and we see this. And by the way, as we go through all of these different terms, I want you to just kind of take notice that some of these, you're going to hear a few of these terms come up in one or two, you know, in one passage. In other words, a lot of these are meant to be interchangeable. That's why we know it's the same office, the same role from all these different individuals, or from the, you know, the men who would step into these. In Acts 20, 28, it says, Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, there's a reference to it, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, There's an over, you know, we're going to look at the overseers. To shepherd, there's the word, to shepherd the church of God. He owns it. It belongs to him, which he purchased with his own blood. What part of the Godhead is it speaking about right there? Christ, isn't it? His, his church. It's a church of Christ. It doesn't belong to man. No man gets to claim that. It's his. And it says, and Luke says to, you know, to, to, uh, heed yourselves to all the flock. To, you know, he has made you overseers. He's made you the shepherd for that church. We see in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 2 the same kind of reference. Peter says, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers. So we have shepherd and overseers right here being interchangeable. And we also see it in Acts 20 and 28 when Luke writes that. And so that's what a pastor is. He's a, he's a shepherd. The shepherd is an elder. It's used interchangeably. I am not a pastor. I don't have the authority to be a pastor. I don't have, I don't meet the qualifications to be a pastor. We see those qualifications in Titus and Timothy. And then we see, we come to what is, you know, what we probably most commonly refer to our leaders in, in the con- local congregation. And that is an elder. And by the way, you notice all of these, every time it mentions pastors, every time it mentions elders, every time it mentions overseers or shepherds, you notice it's always plural. It's never singular. We don't have one person that's over everyone. Think of how dangerous that could be to have one person that's over everything. There's a reason why God wanted his church to be overseen by multiple men. So that if there's a difference, one man, you know, they can hold each other accountable. Now we know Christ is over the whole church. Christ is never going to sin. Man's not capable of doing the same thing that Christ can do. And so we have this plurality in the leadership. But we see the elders, and the elders are, the Greek word for that is presbuteros. Presbuteros is the translated a director, or the ones who are committed to the direction and the governing of the congregation. Now you notice how, you know, they, they're, they're starting to, you're starting to see the different hats that they wear. 
They are to protect, and you know, and this is this is why it's such a big responsibility to be an elder, but it's also why it is such a prestigious position, why God looks at it with such honor. Because they are called to protect us, they are called to make certain decisions that are tough decisions to make. But that's what they are as a director, the ones who are committed to the direction and governing a, com- a congregation, making sure that it's operating the way that it needs, making sure that the truth is being taught, making sure that certain decisions are being made that's going to keep the organization going with it. When you look at Titus chapter 1 and verse 5, we see this. Paul writes to Titus, For this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking, and appoint, what? Elders in every city. You appoint elders in every city because one isn't going to you know, be enough to cover it. You appoint elders in every city, and so we see that term elders, being used right there, which is the same office that we see in, you know, in other areas. And finally, we see overseers or bishops. That's the Greek word episkopos. And so we've got three of these that describe the same office, the same role, but with different hats. You know, I've had people ask, well, then why, you know, why are there three different Greek terms for this? Well, because elders don't do the same thing. They'd only have one term for them if there was only one thing for an elder to do. But you think there are multiple things that elders are to do. They protect us. They make decisions for us. And as this one says, is, you know, with the episcopos, an episcopos is a watchman or a superintendent. They make, you know, they oversee it. They make sure that, you know, that, uh, everything's in order again. They, uh, you know, they watch over the souls of people. They make sure that the truth is being taught, that nothing comes in that shouldn't be in here. You look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, Paul addresses this one. When he writes his letter to Timothy, he says, This is a faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. That's what he is. He's a, you know, he's a super, you know, these aren't separate terms. You look at all of these and, you know, and what I want to challenge you to do is, don't just take these verses, do a, you know, do a search on what, you know, on what all three of these terms are. So that you really can get a good idea of the, all the hats that an elder really does wear. Because, in, you know, and looking at why, you know, a pastor and an elder or an overseer or, or a bishop, it's all the same office. Just with different, with multiple responsibilities that these men take on. But when you look in Paul's letters and throughout Paul's letters, the role of elders and bishops and overseers are used interchangeably with one another. In fact, I love what the new uh, the New Testament word study dictionary how they describe it and why you know the, these the different ones. They, they they describe it as saying an elder denotes the dignity of the office and bishop or overseer denotes its authority and duties. I think that's a great description right there. And so we have these men who are in these very important positions in the church with all these. So hopefully that uh, helps a little bit with understanding the difference between a pastor and a preacher. I'm not going to just, you know, I'm not going to disfellowship anyone who calls me a pastor by accident or if they just, um, usually I can, you know, it's kind of an indicator, I, you know, that they may have attended a different church and that's just what they're used to. And I'm not going to, you know, it depends who it is, I guess. Sometimes I'll, you know, correct it, but, uh, but I don't have, you know, re- biblically, I can't, I'm not a pastor. Now, having said that, can a pastor preach? Absolutely. I know pre- they're good. They're very good preacher friends of mine that are also serve as elders in con- different congregations. And you know, and they just when they start talking about the preacher part of it, he just kind of steps out and let the other elders kind of you know take the reins in that con- in that discussion. So that you know, especially when they're talking about finances and paychecks and all of that sort of thing, but. That, you know, when you look at it biblically, though, there are differences between what the pastor and the preacher is. If you have any further questions, you can talk to me after this.